Hey everyone, Dan here. Before we get into it, if you enjoy these videos, please hit the like and subscribe button. And keep in mind that these are my own thoughts, opinions, and ideas. These are not meant to be, nor should you take them as investment or trading advice in any way, shape, or form. Do your own due diligence, put in the work for yourself, and make your decisions based on that. Enjoy. All right, folks, here we are on Monday, December 23rd. We're going to take a look at RGTI today. So RGTI continuing to push strong after this bit of a pullback here. Uh, the last few trading days down almost 4% that day, down over 30% that day, but then it recovered over 25% the following day. Now, today it's up right now, again, also close to 25%. I put in some new Fibonacci extension levels, um, just garnering some price action from this latest swing. So it's not a lot to go off of, though a lot of these levels, at least in this lower range here, are fairly duplicative of the Fibonacci extension levels that we had in the previous videos, and those were holding up quite well. So that gives me some confidence that if it does continue to push through the, the range where it is currently, you know, these uh, levels might hold up really, really well. So to sort of preface this, um, if this 675 low breaks and we get price action getting put in below that, um, this the whole FIB extension levels are a bust and we would have to revisit them. But for now, I think that they are good to go. So what's happening uh, based on these levels? 1223 is basically where it's getting really sticky right now, right? It's getting sticky and stuck. Um, you saw that in the in the pre-market uh, as it worked really strongly off of this 1023 prior to that. See, see how nicely these are just lining up um, in the recent price action. So worked off of that 941, came up to that 1023, got a nice boost off of that. Sailed pretty easily through this 1106. So I think that's why it's having a battle down toward that um, you know intraday today um, because it did sail through it but it is an important level so it kind of bypassed that got caught by the 1223 and um, you know rejected off of that and needed to re-wrestle with this 1106 so I think that the real battle here is not actually at 1223 at the moment it's this 1106 it's is this 1106 going to be support and if it is was this the support that was needed meaning whatever is going to get put in with this candle right now um, is that going to need to come down to reconfirm or not if it doesn't then yeah maybe this suffice right this wick candle body candle body wick um, maybe that suffice for at least the short term support that needed to be sort of um, maintained um, or initiated at 1106. Um, now, if it does come down again and retest, you know, then that doesn't necessarily mean, you know, that it's going to fall and it's going to dip um, and, and sort of like really knife, but it, it may just mean that it's again needing to come back and reconfirm, you know, just one more time, um, or maybe a few more times, is this 1106 really going to hold? Um, and we might see it wrestle with that a bit. Now, if it does flip it to resistance, then 1023, 941, certainly in play. But if it does this sort of a thing, which kind of, you know, here it looks perilously close to flipping it to resistance, right? Especially when it comes back here and it kind of rejects off of the body. But you see, then it works through it. And so to me, this is just wrestling with the level. But while I think you might be tempted to say the battle at the moment is 1223, I think the, the battle is actually 1106. Um, so we'll see how that plays out through the rest of the day. If you can get support confirmed there, then yeah, that puts 1223 in play. Um, and you'd want to see it working more sort of aggressively toward that. Uh, and then that brings into play the next level that I would look for, which is that 1372. Maybe you get some action here around this previous um, topping out at 1275. I don't know that anything is really there other than maybe that's just where it fizzled out in the pre-market. So there might not really be anything there. Um, but yeah, 1223 to 1372, if it can get legs back uh, and, and sort of an aggressive move to and through this 1223, that may take some pressure beyond today, right? That may come another day this week or next week or what have you. Um, but yeah, 1106 is actually where I think the battle is at the moment. Now, flipping here to the EMAs, we see 
when it caught support here, it caught it off of sort of the brunt of the eight, right? It caught it with wrestling of the eight. Now it didn't do the nice thing where it sort of like lightly touches or near misses, right? Light touch, light touch, near miss off of the eight. You know, that's like nice, clear sign of bullish momentum that's still sort of in, in the tank and waiting to be exhausted. Um, this put in, you know, a little bit more of, of an elbow, um, you know, really body checked it a little bit, but it didn't come down to the 21, right? So to me, this isn't sort of shouting out, okay, the bulls are really losing. Uh, they're really getting exhausted here. If they are, we'll get some pressure toward the 21. We'll get some pressure toward the 34. Then things might look like, okay, what's this consolidation of this breather? going to look like you know the pullback the consolidation whatever shape it takes um but yeah that's that's my look on the emas at the moment still nothing sort of really really disconcerting um if we just bring in this more recent price action you can see where some of these shelves are um you know again this is just a couple of weeks or so worth of price action so just keep that in mind but lots of of you know, decent shelves here, and then obviously lacking up in the 12s at the moment because this is all the price action that got put in above that. But, um, you know, if these can hold and the buyers continue to step in here, then it won't need to rely on any of these shelves down here in the single digits, which uh, obviously I'm sure the RGTI bulls don't necessarily <laughs> want to see what happens if it dips back down into single digits because you never know when a dip kind of starts to run away from you. Um, now, <laughs> this looks somewhat useless, but let's, I think there is some use that we can make of it. Let's work from the bottom up. So down here, phase oscillator just at 88.64 at the moment. Nothing there that's screaming out that there can't be, you know, more movement through bullish momentum. Um, not too worried about the TTM squeeze indicator, obviously still playing out this trigger and fire back here. Um, now the channel, uh, looking at the channel, you see the motion of the wave cloud, right? This green wave cloud, that's where it caught support. Didn't need to come down and check the mid range of the channel. So again, even if it did check the mid range of the channel and continued on, that's often a good opportunity where we say, yeah, there could very well be more bullish momentum left to exhaust here. Um, but it didn't even need to do that. It's riding the wave cloud um, and riding the wave cloud and pushing back out of the upper bound of the channel. Now, how much time it can con continue to spend outside of the channel is, you know, going to be the question. And it is really just a, I don't have an answer. That is the question. Um, but it spent quite a bit of time out here and then reengaged and then popped right back out above the channel. So can it continue to situate above there? We'll see. Um, but it is a good sign to my eyes that there's potential for just additional bullish momentum here because um, it's pushing off of the wave cloud. It's not pushing off of, you know, the <laughs> sort of suspending above the wave cloud like we saw here. So it is diminishing a little bit, but there could certainly be a reemergence or even just a further exhaustion of the current momentum before anything more particular happens. Now, if it comes into January in this range, um, we're going to see it engage with these ATR levels here. So if these come into play, uh, January ATR is about 1873 or 70 seven, something like that, um, call trigger. And that would give it a plus one up to nearly 13, like 1295 or so. Um, put trigger right now is situated about 1098 or 11, somewhere around there. You can see it moving as the price action gets put in, right? As we're looking at it right now. Um, and that would give it a minus one down to like 973 or so. So, you know, those will play a, a better factor. I'll play more of a factor when um, January rolls around. But right now it's just, it's popped so much that it's just completely left those behind. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's relatively irrelevant at the moment. Um, but to me, I think that this is the best look for the time being is this really current swing, really recent price action, you know, kind of um, leaning into the really fairly recent volatility and saying, okay, what are our best levels off of this? And I, you know, I do think versus the EMAs versus the ETR levels or the wave cloud, whatever, I think that this is the best look of support and resistance levels and um, where we want it to get traction, where we want it to break through, what it might look like if it starts to break down. Um, 
So that's, you know, I, until this fib extension breaks, which it might, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to lean on this sort of more heavily. But 1106 at the moment is what looks like the battle to me. 1223, 1372, if you carry on, if it breaks down, 1023, 941, 839. Uh, like I said, if 675 breaks, we got to look at the chart again. <laughs> so, all right, folks, so I hope that your trading week is off to a good start. And as always, I appreciate you watching and I will see you in the next video.